Hello, developers. Are you ready for our next session? Now we're going to hear about seven, yes, seven new features that help you simplify building modern applications. So please welcome, representing the Netherlands, and he really does own five bikes, Google Cloud Developer Relations Engineer, Vietse Venema. Hi, my name is Vietse Venema. I'm a developer, and I'm an author. I wrote this book, Building Serverless Applications with Google Cloud Run. It's a short story about the book. It's, um, it has a bird on the cover. It's an uh, O'Reilly animal book. So O'Reilly doesn't let you pick the animal. They do that for you. So it's a book about cloud computing. So yeah, I got the bird. And, um, and when I first showed this, this book to my, my daughter, she's five year, years old, she, um, she looks at me, Dad, did you write a book about a bird? Fair question. <laughs> so I'm like, um, no, it's about containers, running containers in the cloud. So she looks at me, puzzled. <laughs> did, you, did you put a, con a bird in a container? Well, it's, it's sweet, right? <laughs> another, another thing I, I like about being a dad is that I can make dad jokes now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like to bring the energy level up. So what do I say to you when there's a duck flying into you? Duck? <laughs> Okay, and I have another one. So who's, who's from Bavaria? I like to say hands. I, okay, I learned a very great dad joke yesterday. Um, I'm going to try this in German. So, welcher Vogel hat nur ein Bein? Ein halbes Brathähnchen? Okay. <laughs> you can applause. Yeah, yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Awesome, but I'm here today to tell you about the features we launched in Cloud Functions and Cloud Run. I'll do some live demos. I mean, what can go wrong? Let's get started with Cloud Functions. Cloud Functions are the easiest way to run some code on Google Cloud and extend Google Cloud products. All you need to do is write a function and deploy. You don't need any DevOps experience, and you can connect over 125 Google Cloud and third-party services. So this is when Cloud Functions is useful, if you want to respond to events, if you want to respond and uh, want to transform data as it arrives and store it in a data store, or, and this is my personal favorite, if you want to extend Google Cloud products. So if you have some logic in Java, put it in a Cloud Function and call it from a SQL query in BigQuery. What's new in Cloud Functions? You told us you really liked Cloud Functions, but you wanted more. And that's why we added more. We launched the second generation of Cloud Functions. It has more compute power, longer processing times, and more events. So today, you can select up to eight CPUs and 32 gigabytes of RAM. This is about enabling workloads that didn't fit on a Cloud Function in the past. And this also helps. We increased the maximum processing time for HTTP-triggered functions to one hour, a full hour. And finally, more events. Cloud Functions now supports over 125 event sources through its integration with EventArc. That's more, 10 times more than before. So Cloud Functions second generation is about more compute power, longer processing times, and more event. But there's more. Do you know that sinking feeling when you've rolled out the change to production and you discover that you made a mistake? Like, I know I do. Um, I, I pushed a small change that didn't need testing straight to production. I, I will, I will, that maybe that, this is not the time and place to tell you about that. But um, second generation cloud functions run on Cloud Run. I know, right? That's, that sounds complicated. Um, but it has been this way all along. So Cloud Run and Cloud Functions run on the same shared infrastructure. But we've now made it even more explicit. That means you can click through and edit the underlying Cloud Run service. And that includes traffic management, 
to the revisions that Cloud Run automatically creates for every deployment. And that's super useful. Because sometimes you make an honest mistake and you want to click re quickly revert, like I did back in 2016. Um, still now the year. Now here comes my favorite feature. I really like how you can use Cloud Functions to extend other cloud, Google Cloud products. BigQuery Remote Functions lets you call a Cloud Function from a SQL query. In case you're not familiar, BigQuery is the, 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 data, the serverless data warehouse in Google Cloud. And with remote functions, you can extend BigQuery with code written in Java, Python, JavaScript, or any of the seven supported uh, languages in Cloud Functions. And that's great for logic that's very easy to express in a general programming language, but very hard to express using SQL. Let's say you're migrating from Hadoop to BigQuery, and you have some logic that's implemented in Java, and you don't want to prioritize moving it over to SQL just now, or maybe never. With remote functions, you put that Java code in a Cloud function, and you're good to go. Time for a demo. There we go. So I created a, um, a Cloud function. It's barely readable, but I promise that I'm calling the Google Maps API here to get the distance between two cities. So let's, let's show how it works. Let's, let's look at my trip back home. So I enter Munich and Amsterdam. It generates this command for me. Oh, I can click the button, testing Cloud Shell. Oh, no. Reconnect. Live demos, you've got to love them. Click the button again. Enter. So authorized, of course, yes. My trip back home will take eight hours and 25 minutes. So now I can call this function from BigQuery. So I have this query. I'll zoom in a bit for you. So from Munich to Amsterdam, Paris, Rome, Stuttgart, and Karching, which is this very famous city nearby. No people from Garching in, this, in the room. That's sad. It's 22 minutes away. So there you go. Um, back to the slides, please. So that was Cloud Functions. Back to the slides, please. Yes, thank you. So that was Cloud Functions. To wrap up, we launched the second generation. And it's more, longer, more. More compute power, longer processing times, and more events and an improved integration with the rest of Google Cloud. Now, let's talk about Cloud Run. Cloud Run is a fully managed platform that lets you run your code in containers directly on top of Google's infrastructure. There's no Kubernetes in between. Cloud Run runs containers directly on top of Google's infrastructure. And Cloud Run automatically adds more instances to handle all incoming requests or events. It's very simple and automated. There's no infrastructure to manage, no cluster to worry about. It allows you to go faster, to be more productive. Let me put it this way. We've intentionally designed Cloud Run to make developers more productive. And today, Cloud Run is, in avail is available in all 34 Google Cloud regions. And in every new Google Cloud region, we have announced Austria yesterday, which is nearby, right? <laughs> Ooh, Austria, yeah. Um, in every new Google Cloud region we turn on, Cloud Run is available from the get-go. Now, when, when do you use Cloud Run services for websites and web applications? Use your favorite stack to build your application using any programming language. Access your SQL database, render H, uh, dynamic HTML pages. You can also use streaming with WebSockets. It's all included. Second is APIs and microservices. So you can build a REST API, a GraphQL API, or private microservices that communicate over HTTP or gRPC. And streaming data processing is a very strong use case. So Cloud Run services can receive messages from PubSub and events from EventArc. So this year, we launched Cloud Run Jobs. And you can think of that as a cron for the cloud. So a job executes containers to completion. You can start a job using the API, the Google Cloud Console, or you can schedule a recurring job. And just as with services, you only pay for the resources these containers use while they're running. And there's no infrastructure to manage. So 
To sum up, you can use Cloud Run Jobs to run a script that performs database migrations or other operational tasks, to run a scheduled job, think run job, or to perform batch data processing, because Cloud Run Jobs also supports parallel processing. Um, so it's time for a demo now. There we go. I will authorize. So um, this is my shell script. Hey, it's great to have you here. It will just echo a line. In, the, in reality, it will do something with G Cloud or connect with my database. My favorite fruit of the day is <laughs> Apple. Well, that's funny. My favorite food is Apple. Apple. OK, good. I will save that. And I'll put it in a, in a container. So I have this Docker file from Ubuntu, add an entry, entry point script, which is the script I just added it, and set that as the entry point. I will just build that into a container with cloud build, invalid source. Uh, ah, got it. I'm in the wrong directory. And now I execute this command again. OK. So Huh. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens with live demos. I like it. New shell. This should be key cloud uh, to change to a different. Yes, this will work. There we go. OK, so this should take 18 seconds. We'll have to be patient. If you know a fun joke, tell me. I can share it with the rest. No takers. <laughs> so it uploaded the source. It's building the, the Docker image using Cloud Build. It's pushing the image. So now, when it's done, I can go over to Jobs. I click Create New Job. Select the container image, the latest one. You can see I tested this many times. It can't go wrong. I give it a name, and I execute the job immediately. So this is one of those three ways to start a job, API, Google Cloud Console, or you can also schedule it using Cloud Scheduler. And it's already executing. So when it finishes, I will switch to the Logs tab, and I will see my favorite fruit. Very exciting demo, watching the spinner. Hey, it's great to have you here. My favorite fruit is apple. Thank you. I think it's really great when you like when you like clap when I when I actually finish my demo. Uh, back to the slides, please. So, in the title of this talk, I promised you seven new features in Cloud Run. And before I dive in, here's what I'll cover: Datadoc integration, health checks, CPU boost. Software Delivery Shield, you've been hearing a lot about that today. Security recommendations and Cloud Deploy and integrations. So I cheated a bit because the last one, integrations, is actually two features. First, we're proud to announce a partnership with Datadog around observability. So you can use the official Datadog in-container agent to send logs, traces, and metrics to Datadog. Feature number two. We are introducing health checks on Cloud Run. And to understand what those are, let's look at the life cycle of a container. So there's the startup phase, when your containers are getting ready to serve requests. And there's the serving phase, when it actually serves requests. So when does a container transition from starting to serving? Anyone knows? It uses a TCP startup probe. So as soon as your container listens on a TCP port, Bam, it starts to serve requests. With Cloud Run Health Checks, you can customize the probe. So in addition to TCP, you can now configure an HTTP probe. And this is useful for apps that start listening on a TCP port before they are actually ready to serve requests. Looking at you, big Spring Boot app. Um, we're also introducing a new kind of probe, liveness probes. A liveness probe determines if a container is still able to serve requests. If it's not, it will be shut down, and Cloud Run starts a new container. 
So you can use liveness probes to stop container instances that get into a corrupt local state or force a restart after a certain amount of time. Feature number three is startup CPU boost. And it helps improve scaling speed. So as you know, Cloud Run automatically adds container instances to handle all incoming requests. That's called auto scaling. And container startup time is very important when it comes to scaling. So the faster a container instance becomes available, the faster it can handle requests. And the faster Cloud Run can, can scale your service. So to improve your container startup time, you can do one of two things. The first thing is, well, change your code, decrease your container startup time. Maybe you start lazy loading dependencies. Maybe you um, try to remove things that it is out of loading so it starts up faster. And the second thing you can do is, well, configure more CPU, because usually that improves the startup time, especially when you're using one or two CPUs. That sounds great, right? You pay more, and, and, it starts, and it starts faster, and you don't have to make any code changes. Yeah, but it's also more expensive. So that's why we've came up with Startup Boost. With CPU Boost, we dynamically double the number of CPUs we allocate to a container instance during startup only. So as soon as the container finishes startup, we reduce the number of CPUs again, so you won't be charged for using double the amount during the entire container lifecycle. And we've observed that this can almost cut in half the startup of some workloads. For example, when you use Spring Boot with one or two CPUs, and I know I can see some faces in the, in the audience. You won't believe me, so I'll show you. I'm a, I'm a recovering Java um, developer. So let's go to my demo. I, I initialized a, a Spring Boot app, and I deployed it to Cloud Run. It's a, it's a fairly simple app. All I did was initialize it and added an endpoint that lets you admire my web design skills. It says, hello, Munich. Um, and I deployed it to Cloud Run. And it now says that it starts in about running JVM running for eight and a half seconds, 8.1. I also added an endpoint that let me stop the container because, well, makes it, makes it better to, to collect demo information. Um, about eight seconds. So I can go in to edit and deploy new revision and turn on startup CPU boost and deploy it again. So that will take some time, and I will need to collect the logs again. So I've deployed the same exact container image in this other service that I've called Spring Boost. Uh, it was funny. I thought it was funny. Anyway, but this one starts in almost half the time. So it's four seconds, four and a half seconds for the day. So this one will scale faster, and I won't pay much more. So that's good. Let's go back to the slides. Let's go back to the slides. For feature number four, can we go back to the slides, please? Software delivery shoot. The security of the software supply chain is top of mind today. And that's why we've enriched the built-in security panel with uh, software delivery shield. It shows security information. Um, for example, the CELSA level of your container. So CELSA is an acronym and stands for Supply Chain Levels for Software Artifacts. It defines a level of assurance for your workload. So if you automatically build from your Git repository using Cloud Build, you will be already on level two, as Cloud Build captures source provenance and it signs artifacts by default. And additionally, um, it displays vulnerabilities that were found in your deployed container image group by severity. But we're doing more to help you secure your Cloud Run service. We've added two new security recommendations with Active Assist. Active Assist scans the configuration of your Cloud Run service, and it looks for, well, recommendations to make. And it will now suggest to use Secret Manager if it detects that your environment variables might contain API keys or passwords. So if you have an environment variable that says API key or it says password, well, so, well, maybe you want to use Secret Manager. Click here to enable. I think that's pretty cool. It also recommends to use the built-in service identity if it, if it detects that you might be storing those pesky long-term service account credentials as a file inside of your container image. I hope you're not doing that. But if you do, Cloud Run will tell you. Feature number six, 
Cloud Deploy is a fully managed continuous delivery solution, and it lets you manage the release of your container in a pipeline. So with Cloud Build, it was a bit of a manual work to get that all working. So with Cloud Build, Cloud Deploy, you can manage that from developer environments to staging to productions, to production. And it now has direct support for Cloud Run. And finally, integrations. I've said this before. Cloud Run has been intentionally designed to make developers more productive. And we're constantly looking for ways to improve that. So one of those opportunities is to reduce the amount of manual steps you have to do with automation. So here are two examples of common tasks that require a lot of steps to do with Cloud Run today. Creating a Cloud Memory Store instance and connecting it to the Cloud Run service, because you have to add this serverless VPC connector, wire through the IP to the Cloud Run service, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the second thing is setting up the global uh, external HTTPS load balancer in front of your Cloud Run service with a custom domain, right? Because that lets you take advantage of Cloud, DNA, uh, cloud CDN um, and Cloud Armor, enable easier migrations. Both ta tasks are not hard or complex, but they do require a lot of manual work. You have to read the docs, follow a long list of steps, make sure not to click on the wrong button. So Cloud Run Integrations is like that robot that does all the work for you. You tell it to create a memory instance and bind it to your service, and it does that for you. So look, if you forget anything else from what I told you today, I hope you're remembering the, the amazing dad jokes. Remember this one thing. We've intentionally designed Cloud Run to make developers more productive, and we're looking to improve that every single day. Thank you. Thank you.